Good day, everybody. Happy Friday, and a big thank you for being with me today on August 9th. I'm Kathy. Welcome to Yarn with Heart. So happy that you are here. There's a fun question of the day today. It is, what yarn-related Olympic event would you absolutely love to be part of? Not to win, but just to be part of. Um, next week, I will read all the fun events that everyone types in the comments about that. Um, my fun, yarny event that I wish for would be pattern collecting. So that would be what I would start off the list with. <laughs> um, so I am so grateful for all of you who've been with me since the very beginning. And I'm grateful for people who've joined more recently. And I realize that there are many new people who are watching. So I thought I would do a bit of an introduction about this channel and how it came about. So in September 2023, I stepped way out of my comfort zone and made my first video public. I do crochet a lot and I also knit. So far I do a little more crochet and a little less knitting, but I try to knit a bit every day, at least a half hour, often more. And my skills at both have been getting a lot better this year. And one of my big knitting goals this year is to knit a sweater. And overall, my goal is to complete 12 blankets and 12 hat and scarf sets for casting off the cold. I've been also making things for other uh, organizations as well. Things I make are varied. Shawls, blankets, hat and scarf sets, and I also like to make smaller items to gift to family and friends. Also, the small items can be sold at a local charity bazaar. A few of those sometimes go there. Often, the smaller items help me to learn a new skill. Some of these skills are not even crochet and knitting, so that's uh, something else that occasionally comes up here on the channel. I'm, I'm a bit of a homebody and this vlog is to meet friends and to give back to the online yarn community where I have learned so much over the years. It is where I meet so many wonderful people. So each Friday, I share about what I'm making, patterns used, sometimes about events that I'm following, and I share about places where I have acquired yarns. Much of the time that is acrylic yarn, and I that's yarn I can use for donations. Also, I do splurge occasionally on some fancier yarns, so I share about all types of yarn and where I purchase them. If you are a person who loves to knit or crochet or both, please do grab your cup and let's chat. I'm so happy that you're here. So today we will be chatting about a finished item updates on a couple of works in progress. Also chatting about a couple of ideas, something free and easy to do about pattern ideas. This is where I sometimes go for inspiration about gifts, things to crochet or knit for oneself and or for others. And also a couple of low cost ideas also um, mentioning one of the events that I'm participating in this month. 
two more events are ones that I have fun with each month and I will be starting those projects a little bit later in August. Also, just a quick reminder, there is a 400 subscriber box of goodies to be won by one lucky viewer. And please see the August 2nd video for rules and details if you'd like to enter for a chance to win. Uh, next week, I will chat about other events I'm participating in during August. Hopefully, I will have some finished items and some yarn is arriving in the mail. There might be a yarn opening. I received notice that I have a delivery on its way. If you'd like to subscribe and ring the notification bell, you won't miss that next video coming up on August 16th. So let's jump right in and the finished items. The first one, oh, it's way over here. One second. The first one, this is the first time that I have ever made a stuffed item. I definitely learned a lot in the process and very happy that I tried this. I know there's still a lot for me to learn, but the important thing is that I really had fun and challenged myself. So this is, oh, one second. I have to pause for a second. Hi, I'm back. I just got a notice that I was um, getting low on charge, so I just had to plug something in there. Sorry. So this one is Kitty Cat by Diane Moran from My Pink Bathtub. And I used a 3.75 millimeter and a four millimeter double point needles. And the yarn is Brava Stripe Worsted in the color Laguna from Knit Picks. This, this is a paid pattern on Ravelry. There it is. Now, in my opinion, whether you are experienced or a newbie to making this type of item, this is an excellent knitted pattern. It was the right amount of challenge for me as an advanced beginner knitter. And I learned so much along the way. My kitty cat won't win any ribbons at the Markham Fair, but it does make me smile. Yeah. And the pattern was very clear and easy to follow and well written. Things that I learned as this was my first amigurumi. Now on the first try, I started with circulars because I'm more familiar with using circulars, have, having almost no experience with double points. Um, and what I found was when I did switch to the double points up here part way along, then the stitches got really small. So nope, my tension changed a lot between the two needle types. So I definitely needed to follow what the pattern asked and stay with double point needles for the whole thing. So I did start it over and use double point needles and you can see how consistent the stitches were by doing that. So I had to follow the instructions. That was that, that learning point. And even though I have many button boxes, it was tricky to find two in the right size for the eyes. And luckily Jeff had an old shirt that had seen better days and he said I could use the buttons from there for the eyes. And I sewed up the top of the head. This was another learning point for me. Um, I sewed up the top of the head before putting on the buttons in the mouth and probably should have done those parts first before sewing up that top part as it might have been easier for me as a newbie. I would have had more room to maneuver around when I was sewing on those little bits and pieces. Uh, now also 
I was over eager when finishing the second ear and I forgot to put stuffing in it before I closed everything up. So I filled that ear by squeezing stuffing up from the bottom up to the ear, so to speak. Yeah, so I have no name so far for this little rascal and maybe you can help in the comments with ideas what I should name her. Otherwise, her name will be the very uninspired kitty cat. <laughs> uh, next, I will talk briefly about my works in progress. And after that, an idea I have about finding ideas for gift giving for others and for oneself. So now my works in progress. I'm continuing to work on my Boggy Creek Camp Christmas Blanket. Now this will also be my submission to Judy's Creations in Crochet Summer Cal. I'm making a blanket for that crochet along. And for anyone who'd like to jump in, it's still early days and you have until I think the first week of September to uh, join and finish an item, as long as you're using at least four of the six stitches that Judy demonstrates, people can make whatever item they'd like to create. It doesn't have to be a blanket. And then you submit your picture by the due date to participate in this very fun summer cow. So all of the squares in my blanket have been joined with a slip stitch through the back loop of each square. That is actually my favorite joint and I usually use it for all of my granny square blankets and I really like the way that, let's see if I can lift it up here a little closer. I really like the way that it gives a bit of texture to the frame around each square. The joints are simple joints into a single crochet border that I had previously crocheted around each of the squares. Judy also requests that the border around the whole blanket will be a simple border. Now I just finished weaving in the ends last night and I'm ready to do that border. So I'm hoping it'll be complete for next week. I will take pictures right after the borders completed and submit those to Judy. And then before I send it to Boggy Creek, I hope to attach appliques to the blanket to make it extra Christmassy. Um, in doing that, I'm inspired by Billy, the crafty Floridian. Uh, Billy has such wonderful blankets that she's making for the Boggy Creek blank, uh, Boggy Creek Camp Blanket Drive, and hers are made using granny squares and appliques that viewers send to her in Florida. Uh, when I mentioned to Billy about maybe adding some appliques to my blanket, she said that would be a very good thing. So if you'd like inspiration for Boggy Creek blankets, or maybe to send Billy some squares or some appliques, maybe pop over to Billy's channel. She, she's amazing. And I'll put her link in the description box. Also, all the patterns that I do use and links to the people that I refer to here, those are all in the description box. Now, the next item that is a work in progress. I started another knit item. And that one is um, a knit blanket. This one's called Ch the Charlie Baby Blanket. It's bought by Mariana Mel from Mariana's Lazy Day C Days. I'm using a 4.5 millimeter needles and this yarn called 
Air Sewer. It's a sample in the color clear water. It's 100%, no, 90% acrylic, 10% polyamide. Um, this I got a while back from Cambridge Fibers Limited, and I got a few yarn balls, maybe five yarn balls in total. So I decided that I would do a knit blanket in it. So the pattern is available for free on Ravelry. And here's the stitch pattern. I like the way that this one is working up. Here. Now, um, I hope you'll stay to watch while I share about some ideas for finding patterns. Uh, back in 2020, when everything was so much quieter, this was something I did often, and I don't know why I stopped. And there are so many things available online, electronically, and everything is offered free. And also, it's a fun trip in person as well, and it's to my local library. I've been making really good use of my library card the past few weeks. They have a lot of books and some magazines with patterns that are about gift items. Here's a few that I found. And here we go. 50 knitted gifts. Last minute knitted gifts. More last minute knitted gifts. There's two of these a hundred crochet and a hundred knitted gifts to make. And this one is specifically for Christmas, little Christmas decorations. Now, I even noticed that the online options have some knitting and crochet videos and tutorials at the library. Those are available to borrow. And also the library has some online books and magazines available. Now, I, I found out that if there's something that I'm interested in, I can request that the library make a purchase. And sometimes they will buy things to add to their collection, or they might check another branch of the library to see if that's available nearby. And some, if something is already in their collection nearby, then they will bring it to my closest branch. So these are all ways to try a book before purchasing it. These specific ones, I can um, list the title and the author in the description box in case you wanted to check into them a little more closely. Um, if I find I'm only interested in one or two patterns after I borrow it from the library, this is very helpful because I can just make those items and then return the book. Uh, Ravelry has an option on their database to allow searches for free patterns, and that's another uh, good option. Um, a book exchange with a friend is a good way as well. Or to watch clearance areas in a favorite yarn store or bookstore, either online or brick and mortar for pattern books. Now, if you have any other places where you like to look for patterns for gifts, please do share them below so that we can all learn from each other. <laughs> so to everyone, thank you so much for joining me. Have a wonderful week. Enjoy your crochet, enjoy your knitting. And I hope to see you next Friday.